Hey guys, Julian here. So in today's video, the topic is going to be star reduction in Adobe Photoshop. And I think this is pretty much the easiest way to do this. And um, yeah, without any further talking, I'll just get right into it. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. I have prepared this image of Barnard 150, which is, I think it's also known as the Seahorse Nebula. And um, this image is the perfect example of when to use this technique. You want to use this technique when the, the nebula or the galaxy or whichever object of interest you have, whichever deep sky object is it, it is, when it's basically drowning in noise, uh, sorry, not noise, stars. And as you can see in this image, especially when I zoom in, there are a lot of stars in this image. Um, just. As a heads up, you don't need to do this on monochrome data. I simply don't have any RGB data for this image yet. I'm currently in the process of capturing it. And um, yeah, I just have the luminance data. So uh, the first thing we want to do is stretch the image. Um, if you guys don't know how, you simply use the level slider and, and drag this in and then drag in the black point. That's how you stretch it. This is obviously too far. Um, this image shouldn't be stretched further. Before doing that, of course, as I always preach, um, you have to properly pre-process the image. That means cropping the edges, that means removing any gradients. If it's a color image, you have to correct the, the, the colors, as in calibrate the colors, neutralize the background, remove any color gradients, all of that stuff. That, all, all of that has to be done before you stretch the image. Anyway, now we have a stretched image. You should export this file as a 16-bit TIFF, either in grayscale, if it's a grayscale image. In that case, you'd have to switch to grayscale mode. Or if it's an RGB image, leave it at RGB mode, simply export it as a 16-bit TIFF and run it through Starnet. I have already done that. Um, and the result was this. So, as you can see, there is much more nebulosity here now um, compared to before and it really starts to show the the dark nebula there are some bigger stars that weren't affected by starnet and that's perfectly fine because this method doesn't really want to attack these these large ones the the main issue the the main thing that's overshadowing the nebulosity are these small stars and there are so many of it so First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna name this Starless and this one Stars. So now we're gonna copy them, select both of them and drag them down to the copy slider. And what we want to do right now is isolate the stars. In order to do that, we swap these two. Actually, no, we leave it that way. Starless one has to be on top and then you select the blend mode, subtract. And that leaves you with just the stars as you can see here. Uh, don't worry if it looks a bit weird, that's perfectly fine. So now we want to select both of these as well again with uh, shift and left click, right click and merge these layers. So that's just stars, actually it does original, like that. So here we have the stars and essentially all we need to do now is reduce them. Um, one way to do that would be to simply open up a levels adjustment and drag in the the midpoint slider, but that's not my favorite way of doing it because it affects the brightness as well and the stars should remain bright. So one thing that I prefer to that, that also gives you a bit more control in my eyes, is to copy the layer, then go to filter, other, and then select the minimum filter. And if you're familiar with PixInsight, that's essentially what you do when you select the erosion filter in the morphological transformation in PixInsight. It's, it's pretty much the same effect, only that in PixInsight you have a lot more um, control over the process. And at that point, now you just um, define the radius of pixels that is minimized, I'll just say that. Um, I think in general, the a value between one and 0 0.1 is fine. In this case, I'm gonna try 0 0.6, I think. 
that's a nice improvement. Maybe even 0.75. Yeah, I'll use that. At this point, you just press OK. And now these are your reduced stars. Reduced. All right, now we select both of these layers and put them in a group. And we set the blend mode of this group to linear dodge add. And now when I switch these two layers on and off, you can see the massive improvement. So the second version still has a lot of stars, obviously, but the nebulosity is much more defined. And yeah, honestly, that is all there is to this method. If you feel like this was a bit too much of a reduction, you can always go back to this layer and reduce the opacity. But I think I actually nailed it for that one. And yeah, that's basically all there is to this technique. Um, if you are not sure how to use Starnet++, there are tons of tutorials on YouTube. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I hope this helps some of you guys and I'll see you next time.